And please note, and we're going to look right now, please note that this is not Christianity. And this isn't new to call it not Christianity. It's another religion. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we've got some very old liberalism coming at you right now. the show. This is my show. And you clicked on this because of some reason. I have no idea what the reason is. We're going to be talking about the PC USA, PC USA. And you've probably seen the video maybe about a woman who's um, praying in a church service, so-called. And we're going to just look at exactly, maybe a slightly different angle. I don't know why I said exactly. But well, slightly different angle because a lot of people might already think and have the opinions, and that's fine. And you clicked on this. One of the reasons probably because you want to hear my opinion. Now, you might already know my opinion. And yeah, that being said, um, we're going to look at quite a few things that lead up to this because it's not new. It's not new. And further still, this could happen to a denomination near you. But there's a few things that we need to see and how the pattern has gone. This is from Woke Preacher Clips. We're going to play this. It's going to be a little bit faster speed. And let's just look at it. Last Thursday, March 31st, was the International Transgender Day of Visibility. In the PCUSA, we welcome all of our transgender and queer siblings into this family and relationship with the creator God. So today I wish to pray a prayer that was written for this incredible day. Will you pray with me? Oh God of pronouns, we give praise to the great one, the one who was identifiable as God. I am what I am, you say, the great day, the incarnate he it's going to be very difficult for me to just let this play. I love the guy in the back, by the way, who's just like, man, what is going on? I don't even know what's happening right now. Just going to go over my notes here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. They won last week. That's good. That looked, Oh, that's a good score. I don't think <laughs> he's reading the news. I don't know. The great they. Like, this is a classic example of mixing truth and error. Taking, tra taking true words, which she's saying some true things and mixing error he and she the god of trans being impregnating mary fathering god breastfeeding god of many breasts no shadow you shatter many breasts mary, making every single person male and female male and female intersex non-binary okay like she literally just crushes her own argument Male and female, and then period. Oh, crap. Male and female, and then, and then all these others. <clears throat> it's either male and female or it's not. I mean, of course, that's what the Bible says, but when you don't use the Bible, well, anything goes. In your image. Exactly, in your image. Spectrum, rainbow God, who put your promise for nonviolence in the symbol for pure love before humanity knew, because you knew. Okay, so again, this is giving. So this is giving credence to God is omniscient and probably omnipresent, meaning you know all knowing and everywhere. Uh, he put the rainbow clouds in the, the in the sky and this and that because you knew. Did he though? Because according to your God, he's just kind of just this sidekicky type of God who's just meh. is there any power? He's not omniscient. He just lets you do whatever you want. I mean, really, it's just kind of this this helpful genie type of guy that you can just rely on and you know, just be a Saturday morning, just sit there with his feet kicked up and just you know, suck on a little cord, you know, and just you know, hey, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry, 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 I'm sor
there again, this is a denomination that completely un- unashamedly, as far as I know, has swallowed up all of Darwinism and all of materialistic evolution and, and millions and billions of years and everything else. And so to say, oh, you made these people, how do you know that they weren't evolved? How do you know that they didn't deform? How do you know that there's not some sort of imperfection? It's just anything that is must be good. That's the assumption here. And it's crazy. Who had Joseph who could not sleep with a woman in a beautiful lady's cloak, perhaps of rainbow colors, before we knew. You knew. A beautiful woman's cloak. Where does it say that? Where does it say that it was a rainbow technicolor dream coat? It doesn't say that. That's added. I forget which you know, his uh, uh, Hollywood play thing added that, but that's not in the scripture. And it wasn't a woman's coat. Why in the world would his father give him a woman's coat? Like, do you have a brain that works? No, I, here's the thing. They actually do. They're assuming people who are listening don't. God of pronouns who said, you can call me he or she or they, whatever makes you feel closest to me. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Where? You can call me whatever. Because I'm not a God of creation. I'm not a God of order. I'm not a God of anything specific. Eh, It's just kind of, oh, well, whatever. Invisible and visible God on this day where visibility, celebration, belatedness, affirmation, and acceptance is the bare minimum. Remind us that you are the God of pronouns. Notice that. Not just, but ex- not just the other things. Acceptance. We have to celebrate. We have to accept and celebrate. Not just like, oh, you're here. Sure, there's a man who thinks he's a woman and a woman who thinks she's a man and a bunch of other genders. Because here's the thing. Is the transgender like, okay, are we going to grant? I'm not going to grant, but and you shouldn't either. But say men can turn into women and women can turn into men. There's still only two genders but not according to Facebook where there's, you know, 52 or 62 or 88 or whatever it is. So what is it? Which is it? But again, they don't care. They're not actually going to tell you anything. They, whoever they are and whoever that they is in whatever scenario, just want confusion. Friends, they just want confusion, whether it's PC USA, whether it's our federal government, whether it's some organization, whether it's whatever your local school board, they want confusion. They want you constantly scrambling, constantly the whack-a-mole, constantly hitting at the gnats and slapping and not sure what's going on. Constant chaos. Your house is always on fire. Don't let them do that. Resist and stand on the truth. God's word is truth. The Lord Jesus himself says. So you affirm and you celebrate them. God of Saul, Paul, Simon, Isaac... Jacob, Isaac, Simon, Peter, Abram, and Sarai, and Abraham, and Sarah. God of Joseph, of the coat of many colors, of the Ethiopian eunuch, of the Virgin Mary. God of all found families in the Bible. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there. She says, Saul, Paul, Jacob, Isaac, or whatever she says. She means Israel, Jacob, because that was Israel, or Jacob, and then Israel. These are still normal people. They just changed their name. So what if I start going by Rich instead of Richard? So what? You're not changing genders. I mean, they're they're grasping at straws. Remind us that you affirm us in our full identity, name, pronoun, found family, all of it. For this, we give you thanks and praise to the great I am, the great they them. Thank you, God. Oh, no, it's not. What? What are you even talking about? Like, this is literally. Ah, uh, it's so wrong. God. And so in the now, now in the words that our mother, our father and our sibling, God taught us to pray and pray with us now. Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
She has no mention of Jesus, no mention of the spirit, kind of is hinting at father. But this woman's not a Christian. And please note, and we're going to look right now, please note that this is not Christianity. And this isn't new to call it not Christianity. It's another religion. Liberalism, leftism, to properly define it, is another religion. It's not just, oh, well, they're on the left side of the spectrum. There is no spectrum, not within confessional orthodox faith. There's either you're a Christian or you're not. Now, there might be flavors and we still differ. Oh, well, baptism is this and it's more covenantal or it's this thing. And I believe this about Romans 1 or Ephesians 1 or Romans 9 or something like that. You know, I think I think there's some slight differences here and there. But within the bounds of Scripture, we can differ. We can look and oh, I believe, you know, Jesus, there's a rapture. There's this. No, I don't believe that. I believe, you know, things have already passed. And, you know, Matthew 24 really means this and not that. And Daniel 7 means this and not that. Okay. That's fine. Thousand year reign of Christ, or maybe it's just metaphorical, but that's all within the bounds of scripture, right? I wouldn't even categorize uh, believing in an ancient earth and cosmos within the bounds of scripture because it's not there. It's injected like this is injected within the text. Let's look at this. This is the decline of the Presbyterian Church USA. And this is the main church, right? This is the big church. This is what this woman was talking about. 1788, General Assembly of Presbyterian in USA constituted. 230 years ago, not that long ago. Really not that long ago. Plan of Union adopted the work. General Association of State Connecticut. Okay, kind of boring, whatever. Group leaves the PC USA to form Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Believe the minister standards were too high. This is over 200 years ago. Minister standards are too high. We're not going to get into the minister standards here, but it is. They were not reformed. They deny predestination. Now, just because you deny predestination or, you know, tenets of reformed theology, Calvinism, whatever, doesn't mean you're a heretic. I'm not saying that. doesn't mean you're going to go leftist. There's plenty of Calvinists who have gone leftist too. Just put that in your back pocket. Those who defect views on federal headship and atonement are welcome back into the church. 1869. General Assembly convicts Charles Briggs for denying the infallibility and sufficiency of Scripture. 1893, over 100 years before most of us are born. He's denying infallibility and sufficiency. And the conviction is overturned. You can see all this stuff moving. You can see the tremors in the church, so-called. PCUSA Confession of Faith revised to include non-reformed views. Tricky. Not good. If you're not going to be reformed, if you're going to be uh, a different stream, that's fine. I wouldn't, you know, so long as you're within orthodoxy, so long as you're believing the scripture. But once you start doing this big tent stuff, which is what the SBC hasn't been doing for quite some time, but that's another discussion. But not really. We're going to look at that here in a second. At least compare. About one third of the church's presbytery approve a plan of organic union with other Protestant bodies. Oh, the PCUSA welcomes back Cumberland Presbyterian Church. <clears throat> so they say non-reformed views. Three years later, they welcome. Hey, guys, you can come back. Non-reformed Presbyterians. General Assembly reemphasize the necessity of ministers to hold basic tenets. So the General Assembly, I believe, is like the uh, SBC, for example, has a meeting in June. Basic tenets of Christianity. These tenets, infallibility of scripture. Go figure. Christ's virgin birth, Christ's substitutionary atonement, Christ's bodily resurrection, and Christ's miracles. This is a hundred years ago. They're like, hey, you know, guys, we probably should have some standards, like, you know, believing the Bible. Final year, PCUSA history, Orthodox ministers control permanent judicial. So almost a hundred years ago. Oh, right before this, excuse me. Uh, so General Assembly, uh, 1924, so the next year, Auburn Affirmation, signs by 1,300 PCA ministers, a statement repudiated and protested. So they're repudiating the fact that people need to believe in the infallibility, the sufficiency of scripture, Christ's birth, the atonement, Christ's bodily resurrection, and his miracles. There's 1,300 ministers that are like, yeah, you don't need to believe that. What do you think we are, Christians? <laughs> what do you think this is? We're followers of Jesus or something? Come on, this is the modern age. Listen, and I want you to know, this isn't new, ladies and gentlemen. It's not new. It's not new. 
This is just one example. Final year. So it looks like conservatives basically final year in 1925 are holding. Men who favor Auburn affirmation, the denial of the 1923 affirmation, board of trustees join Princeton. Princeton used to be a great seminary 100 plus years ago. Not anymore. Not even close. Orthodox Westminster is founded almost 100 years ago, 1929. International Report on Mission Work advocates its missionaries to borrow from good parts of other religions and effectively denies the exclusivity of Christianity in 1932. 90 years ago. 90 years ago, they're like, you know what? Hindus and and Buddhists. Yeah. But I want to know, where are other religions doing this? Where is Islam looking at Christianity and be like, you know what? We need some of that Jesus stuff. Where do the atheists, where do the atheists look and say, you know, I think we need some more Jesus. They don't. They don't. Why? Because, well, the Bible's true, right? And we want to constantly fight and battle for the truth. When you have error, it's already error. It doesn't really matter. So it's like, well, you know, let error be error. You know, it's just a different flavor of error. We're not going to add a little truth to it because it's already so corrupt. Whereas you have the purity of the word of God. And of faith. Now, I'm not making some assertion saying one denomination's more pure than the other, per se. But if you're loosening and saying, well, you don't have to believe in the sufficiency of Scripture. You don't have to believe in Jesus. You don't have, just, you don't have to believe in his works, his miracles. It says who? You? Because this isn't how we operate with other things. You read a manual, and you look at the manual, and you say, this is this, and we're going to do this. Or you read an email, or in this case, a letter, you know, a hundred-year-old letter that a hundred years ago, someone writes, you know, a husband writes his wife a letter. She doesn't drop down to one paragraph, you know, paragraph four and only believe that section and ignore the rest or think, well, this part isn't as much important as that part. She reads the whole thing because it's from her husband, just like the Bible is God's word. It's not some idol we worship or we lift up and say, oh, this is so great. I don't care about the pages in which they have and the ink that's on the page in and of itself. I care about the author behind it. I don't read a text message from my wife who says, I love you. Can't wait to see you later. And be, oh, my phone, oh, this, oh, the the uh, the LED brightness in the screen, and, ah, and I'm, you know, I'm staring at the phone. I'm only thinking of my wife because it's a message from her. Can't wait to see you later. Just like, well, God says, can't wait to see you when you're dead. Orthodox minister John Machen or J. Gresham Machen proposes Presbytery and General Assembly ensure members of the board for a missionary be believers in the exclusive exclusivity of Christianity. Christianity and Liberalism is a fantastic book. Buy that book. Read that book. Learn from that book. Machen leads a group of conservative ministers. So is 33. 33 General Assembly mandates any church member, church member or church that does not give the official, officially authorized missionary program the same position as those who refuse to partake in the Lord's Supper. More conflict. 1936. He's charged with disturbing the peace. And he's defrocked, as they say. Keep that in your back pocket. 1936, Machen, kind of the last stalwart, you know, picture some stalwart conservative guy, if we still have them in your mind, and he's kicked out. Get out of here. So they go on to do the Orthodox Presbyterian Church and PCA, Presbyterian Church of America, which are both, as far as I know, still mildly conservative. Well, when did this happen? Well, 1956... Women were included into ministry. All right, so 1956 is when they ordain women to be elders, or rather deacons. And 1965, Reverend Susan Andrews, she becomes the first woman priest. Naturally, because when you're denying scripture, you're going to say, well, we're going to make it up. Women are here. Why can't they be priests? Well, because God says so. That's why. Why can't they be ministers? They're not priests. Excuse me. 2011. So four years before Obergefell, the same-sex marriage ruling, where two dudes or two women can get married. Since 2011, PCUSA, largest U.S. Presbyterian body, shameful, still that's the case, welcomes gay, lesbian persons to serve in leadership positions as ministers, deacons, elders, and trustees within the church based on the discernment of individual ordaining bodies, end quote. So 
56, they say women could be deacons. 65, they say women could be ministers, so basically pastors or or um, elders. And then decades later, probably a little behind the times, but you know, advanced, I guess, for some people's standards, 2011, they allow gay, which of course now would imagine LGBT, the T there and everything else. <clears throat> well, you have to think, well, yeah, but that's not that big of a deal, right? I mean, God is love, right? Yeah, God is love. But love doesn't mean license. Love doesn't mean do whatever you want. Never means that. But let's just look at it as a pragmatism. Just a step outside our, you know, conservative, Bible-thumping, freakish, right-wing extremist group for a moment and say, okay, well, <clears throat> they obviously have to be doing well because they're being with the culture and the culture loves them and is accepting them and everything else, right? I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that. 2016, there were 9,451 churches. This is from PCUSA.org, kind of a good resource. And good, I just mean authentic. Now, 2020, there's 500 less churches. Hmm. Active members, 14, 1.482, over a million, almost a million and a half, to 1.245, 200,000 less people in four years. 200,000 less people. That's 50,000 people per year. Literally 1,000 per week <laughs> saying, we're out. 1,000 per week. Yes, here it is. PCUSA has long-term declined since its membership high in 1983. In 2005, active membership Presbyterian Church was went down from 900,000, 2.3 million, so 19, 2005, 2.3 million. 2016, 1.4 million. 2020, 1.2 million. So in 15 years, they lose a million people, a million members, a million. That is astounding. In 15 years, some of the most crucial times. So in 2005, so they've already ordained women and deacons, women as deacons and elders in the 50s and the 60s, you know, sexual revolution, right? All this stuff plays into it, right? The 60s and the 70s in particular, then you have the 80s and kind of a conservative resurgence within certain things, both within politics and even within uh, the Southern Baptist Convention and other denominations as well. You have others who are starting colleges and and universities in the 70s and 80s, seminaries trying to pick up and say, we need actual Bible believers in here. And they look and say, look, this is what this is. This is here. We need to fix this. So the PCUSA doesn't do any of that. They've already gotten rid of all the conservatives, all the people with any sort of conviction. And they say, we're just going to roll. We're going to keep going. But it should help them, right? Again, from a pragmatic approach, it should make sense. Right. The world says, do this pragmatically, do that. You're good to go. But that's clearly not the case, because in 2005, they have 2.3 million members. 10,000 churches. 10,000. Excuse me, almost 11,000. 10,959 churches. <laughs> Membership has declined to acclaimed 1.35 million and 9,161 churches. But that's even less now in 2020 because this is updated. I don't know when this is from. Influencewatch.org slash nonprofit slash Presbyterian Church USA, PC USA. So 2005, they have 2.3 million members. 2020, they have 1.2 million members. That's 1.1 million people that leave in the Obergefell in 2015. So 10 years after 2005, five years ago, six years ago, Seven, technically, but based on our numbers here, hemorrhaging members, a thousand per week. That's an entire large church, not a mega church, but bigger than most average churches. Or if you want to say, you know, most, most churches, anywhere from a hundred to hundred, anywhere from 50 to 200 people. That's like 10 churches per week on average, 10 per week, people leaving 10 churches per week consistently for 15 years. That's insane. So clearly they don't care at all. And not only is this woman in violation of, well, first Timothy two, 
Likewise, you do not uh, want a woman to adorn himself with. I want a woman to adorn herself <clears throat> with respectable apparel, with modesty, self-control, not braided hair, or gold jewelry, pearls, but with good deeds and proper for women who profess to worship God. A woman must learn with quiet, quietness and full submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over men. She must remain quiet. Now, it does say, and this is and then Corinthians says, for every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. For it is as if it were head, her head were shaven. If a woman does not cover her head and we should cut her hair off, it is shameful for a woman to have her hair cut off or shaved. She should cover her head. A man ought not to cover his head since he is the image of God, but a woman the glory of man. So again, that like ruffles feathers right away. And I understand that. That might annoy you. But that's what the word of God says. And if you're curious about what that really is, dig into it further. Look at the context. What's going on? This isn't just cultural. You know why it's not just cultural? Because it says, well, because of the angels. Same thing like Paul roots creation order or the order in the house and in the church he roots it in creation. For man was first created, then Eve, and it wasn't the man who, but Eve who fell into temptation. This doesn't mean women are worse than men. But stop believing the lie. Let's believe God's word. 1 Corinthians 14, women are to be silent in churches. Now, does this mean they can't say, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom or not sing? Of course not. That's not what this is saying at all. They are not permitted to speak, but must be in submissive, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they wish to inquire about something, they are to ask their husbands at home. My understanding of this is piping up and yelling during service, asking questions of the pastor during service, the priest, the person who's talking, the guy who's talking. That's what's going on here. At least that's my understanding. I'm not a New Testament scholar, but that's what seems to be happening. There's a good article here on nine marks and just be careful. It's all right. Nine marks is still good in certain areas and certain times. Denny Burke, he's a complementarian. Again, he's at Boyce College, but he's a solid guy. Uh, I, I met him and I know who he is. He's writes solid. Not everybody's perfect. So just let's chill out. This is a good article. Um, he explains what's going on in these verses. Does Paul really mean that women must never say anything in worship? This is how some people have read these verses over the years, but I think it's a misreading of the text. Why? Well, you should go read this whole article. So I'm going to put that in the description because this video is going a little long. My point is that you have this woman who's here talking about Xi Jim and they and the God of pronouns and blah, blah, blah. And he just accepts us who we are. It doesn't say anything about actual father. It says God, right? But God's just a general term and she could be praying to anybody. She's praying to the ceiling is really what this woman was doing there in Iowa. She's in Iowa, right? Don't think, oh, you know, it's San Francisco. Of course it is. It's Seattle. It's New York City. Of course it's liberal, liberal leftist. They're in Iowa. Okay. Hopefully we'll look at some other things uh, next week. There's so much to talk about. There really is. Uh, and I just don't have enough time, but I've got an exciting sponsory thing coming up. And uh, I want to tell you all about next week. And also, we're going to hopefully look at Hillsong um, documentary and look at some other people, maybe some Julie Roy's theology. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. I'd love to do this show every day. I really would. And if you do want to sponsor me, by the way, uh, or sponsor or support, I guess probably a better word, you can buy me a coffee. And that's on my YouTube page. I'll put it in the little description as well. And that's kind of like dropping a tip. Like if we were to go to coffee, you're like, hey, let me pick up your $4 latte or whatever. That's the same type of idea, like Patreon. So if you want to do that, it's there in the description. And you can also find it in the about on my YouTube page. All this to be said, we need to stick to the scripture. We need to stick to the text. We need to stick to the word of God. That's what we need. God's word is what we stick to. And if we don't think that, and we think, oh, we can go with the times, we can go with this race hustling, we can go with this critical theory as a tool, an analytical tool, we can go with these things, we can have women do this or that, and men not do this or that. Sadly, most churches are weak and anemic because of the men. Now, the women step up and say, well, I'm going to do it because somebody's got to do it. But both are in sin, so often the case.
right? The men are in sin because they're capitulating their role and responsibility as leading the church and their families. And the women are in sin for subverting and taking those responsibilities. But then it's like, well, somebody's got to do it. Yes, but God is not a God of pragmatism. God is not a God of practicality. He's not a God of, you know, just do whatever the flip you want. He's just not. Okay. God is a God of order. He's a God of strength. He's a God that is holy, holy, holy. This progression that started over 100 years ago, 130 years ago, really, if you want to look at it, can easily happen in the Southern Baptist Convention. It can easily happen in your non-denominational denomination. It can easily happen in the PCA, in the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. It could happen in the Lutheran Missouri Synod Lutherans, I think it is. That's the conservative body of Lutherans. It's already happening and has been happening in the Methodist Church. Your local church. Well, we're just us. We're just us. The point is we have to stick to the scripture. Who is Jesus? Is Jesus the incarnate word of God or not? Is he perfect or not? Is his testimony, is he the only way and the truth or not? Is he coming back or not? That's the question. Hope you all find this helpful. Drop a comment and uh, share if you don't mind. And like, that's the three-piece special, as my buddy calls it. Please do that. It helps us out. I'm trying to get to 500. I'm very close to 500 subs. Help me get there if you've not subscribed. Please do that so I can open up that community tab and we can have a whole lot more fun. Don't take care of me against the world for it. See ya.